Just before I get into this month's episode of this month in UK Fun Fest, there is a major change that I'm going to talk about that will be taking in effect uh, as of this episode. So any coverage uh, or talking about funfair posters and showing the funfair posters of fairs that will be happening, are happening, or have happened, will no longer be covered in this episode and any episodes of TMU, FKF, or whatever going forwards. Um, this is due to the lengthy editing process and the process of having to find all the funfair posters as well as the amounts that have come flooding in and uh, as well as th having to narrate over them and uh, it has a massive effect on the length of the video. So uh, the, the, the recent episodes have been long enough but I don't want them to get any longer with how many fairs and any news on events that have been coming. So there will still be any news on events or if there's anything coming into light. Um, but if you want to know about which fun fairs will be happening, uh, check with your local fun fairs uh, social media pages, whether it be on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, or either of these two Facebook groups. So join these groups if you want to keep an eye out for any fun fairs that will be happening. So with that out of the way, let's dive into this month in UK fun fairs. Hello and welcome to the April 2021 edition of this month in UK Fun Fest. Now this is the month of the year I'm pretty sure you all have been waiting for. It, April the 12th uh, marks the day where we can finally get out to Fun Fest. They are allowed to open as well as other outdoor hospitality. And uh, yeah, we managed to get to five fairs this month, which was uh, pretty good. Um, hopefully let's just see what May has to lie ahead. And uh, before we get into the events, there are a couple of news that I do want to give a mention. Well, first of all, we'd like to wish a very happy belated birthday to Paul Rowland, who turned 100 at the end of uh, March. Um, in an interview she recently did for BBC News this month, she described funfair restrictions for Covid as worse than the war days. In the interview, Paul said that the shutdown was worse than World War II, as the fair managed to operate during the war. Um, to see the full interview and for more information on this, please visit the BBC News website. Now we may have talked about this campaign briefly on this month in UK Fun Fairs, but Future for Fairgrounds managed to get a spotlight on BBC News South. Um, to see the full uh, report on this, uh, it can be found on the BBC News website or can be found on the Future for Fairgrounds Facebook page. So with those bits out of the way, let's have a look at any news regarding events uh, in the UK. First of all, the organisers of the Nutsford Rural May Day Fair have announced the event will not be taking place due to social distance being in place. Um, despite the fair not happening over the bank holiday weekend, they did announce that there will be something at some point later this year, although it hasn't been confirmed exactly what the event will be, but keep an eye out on the Nutsford May Day Fun Fair Facebook page for more information and for further news updates. Pat Collins Fun Fairs have announced via the Facebook page that the Fun Fair in Hearsall Common in Coventry would not be open from Monday the 12th due to the week-long period of the mooring of the death of Sir Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. In a further update, however, they were able to open from the 13th of April, although they ended up having to close on the 17th of April due to council decisions, as well as to mark the respect of His Royal Highness, who passed away during the month. Barkers Amusements have stated on the Facebook page that despite the green light for 12th of April for Funfest to reopen, that they will not be ready to open up uh, for when the day did eventually come. Uh, the full reason why can be stated here and uh, we would recommend you pause the video to read every little bit in detail. Although they did manage to open up at uh, Blabby uh, on the 23rd of April and as of recording this it is still open until the 9th of this month so if you can get down there. Burns Highland Summer Fair in Scotland was recently announced as uh, cancelled, although that might not be the case just yet, as uh, emails have been flooding into the local council and uh, the following statements can be seen here on the Fun Fairs Around Scotland Facebook page. So has it been cancelled? Has it not been cancelled? Only time will tell. And now onto any news to some new rides that are coming to the UK Fun Fair scene. Scott Pullen and Sons Fun Fair have announced that at the very first fair since uh, November 2019 that they will be hosting, we'll see the debut of two brand new rides. Uh, the first one will be the Hot Rod Dodgems, which was made by uh, Janicek. I, 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 Janicek. I, I can't remember how to pronounce the company, but it will be um, somewhere on the screen. 
and also a ride called Infinity. Now, this hasn't been confirmed if they are going to be getting a ride called Infinity, but the ride that did end up turning up at their fair since uh, November 2019 was uh, Jay Waitman's Infinity. And so far, this doesn't confirm, are they going to be getting a ride called Infinity? Well, I wouldn't expect so after that. <laughs> Now this month saw the debut of three brand new Runaway Mine Trains. Uh, so the first one is this one for Edward Dance Jr. which is made by Turkish company uh, Guven. And this made its debut at Kingsway in Gloucestershire. Uh, the next two were made by Jay Waitman and they were Henry Barker's which made its debut at Funland at the Tropicana. And is still open there as a recording this. And the next one made by Jay Waitman was this one and is owned by Robert Hill. Now this made its debut at Wolverhampton West Park, open with Harry Jones. And uh, yeah, that's really all we have to touch up on that topic. In the last two episodes of this month in UK Fun Fairs, we have talked about the Reeves family getting a brand new ride. So here's uh, the report we showed off uh, last time. And two more photos have come into light. But before we do get to that, the ride has been announced that it will be called Void. So definitely something fresh, something new, something not so common on the UK fairground circuit. So something definitely fresh and I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. Now here we have the photo of the trailer being sprayed and we have some other parts and components of the rides. Now these next two photos do confirm that this will be a Tivoli machine. So we have this photo which is definitely the frame for the backflash because of the way it folds up. And also these which are part of the ride's fencing. So comparing this to the likes of the extreme this does confirm that yes this is going to be a Tivoli machine however this does not confirm what ride type this will be so will it be an extreme orbiter will it be uh, a move it oh, because they haven't actually made one in years will it be a warp 10 or is this better known as exciter with extreme style seating or will it be a world first we'll we'll have to wait and see if any other further updates come during this month Global events and attractions have built up their rocket ride, which was purchased uh, from the USA back in February. Um, yeah, it's built up for the first time, and we are looking forward to hopefully seeing this in person if it does open up in the UK. Although we cannot say where this is built, uh, mainly because we don't know, and it's probably for the better just to avoid people flocking to it. Um, but this is the very first ride of its kind in the UK, and it is the first of its kind in the world. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing this and riding this if I ever do able to. <laughs> PWS Rides have announced that they are working on a brand new model of their fold up doldrum track. So, this one is going to be 20 meters by 12 meters, all will fold up on one load and should be completed and open for the summer, according to the report. Although this hasn't been confirmed exactly who will be getting this, but that's the case with all PWS Rides. We don't find out until they're completed and until they're collected from the factory. Keeping on topic with Dodgems, a brand new track from Polish company CBK Technic has been completed for William Porter. So the track is open with the current sets of Bertelsen uh, Berlin cars from William's previous track, which was made by a Belgian company, and it's open with Tom Wilson at Coventry. Um, it hasn't been confirmed exactly what is happening to William's old track, but we should have an update hopefully ready for next month's episode. Now in a previous episode of this month in UK Fun Fairs, we talked about uh, a brand new fun house made in Germany for uh, Lewis Wilmot. Now the ride is making its debut and it's making its debut at Barry's in Port Rush. So we don't really have a clear photo of the ride itself at the park, but we can see it in this photo uh, just behind the Ferris wheel. Now a fun fair hosted by the Couplands in Putney Common in London saw the debut of two brand new rides to the UK fair scene. Well one brand new in quotation marks but this one however is brand new. It is Perron Couplands Avengers Miami fresh out of the factory from Eagle Fabrications. Looking absolutely fantastic. I really do hope to see this Miami some point if I'm ever down these southern areas. And this one is the Fabry Starflyer top of the world which is global events and attractions. So we're seeing quite a lot of Scottish rides open up over here, um, given the roadmap in Scotland is different to ours over here. Now, even though this was reported on the 1st of May, but the photos may have been taken on the 30th of April, maybe a bit earlier than that, and we thought we'd show these off while this is still quite raw. So the fourth Super Trooper is nearing completion and is being tested at the firm uh, in Windsor at the PWS factory. Now, we do have a name for who this should be for, but we are not confirming that and we are not denying 
who that will be for, but we should have an answer and hopefully the ride will open up with the owner some point later on in May. And finally, let's have a look at some rise changes to the funfair scene in the UK. Now we don't normally cover theme parks or amusement parks on this channel, but we thought we'd include this given Flamingo Park's history with uh, travelling rides at their park in Hastings. And this one quite came out a shock to us, so uh, we've already covered this on Theme Park Euphoria, but for those who aren't familiar, uh, Flamingo Park in Hastings have purchased the Pinball X uh, Zamperla Twister Coaster from Dreamland in Margate, which we couldn't believe given the size of the park, but it is fully built up and should be open as early as May the 1st. Um, but yeah, if we are ever at Flamingo Park, we haven't actually been there for years, we should have some content and maybe a vlog over on the Theme Park Euphoria channel, so keep an eye out for that if you haven't subscribed to the channel already. Now after a while of being in storage, Henry Dancer's jets are ready to open at Barry Island, and we have to say that these look absolutely amazing, a lot of hard work has been put into them, and they have undergone some testing, so they are ready to open up uh, when the park does open to the public. Uh, I think it actually is already open up there in London, but I'll have to double check after recording this. And keeping on topic with Barry Island, Henry Danton now has a brand new fun house for the park. This one was built by George Roland Tucker and is due to be ready to the open. Well, it has been built up at the park now and uh, is ready and waiting for the public. Uh, I do need to double check that opening date for Barry. Now last year, uh, Billy Davis Jr's Tivoli Orbiter has been reported as sold, however the buyer wished to remain anonymous until the foreseeable future. Well now the new owner for the ride has been confirmed, and it is Billy Joe Butlin. Um, no word as of where the ride currently is at the moment, or where it's opening, but it has been reported to have been in the Far East at the moment. The AK Ride Starflyer, owned by Alex Crow, has been seen for the first time under the Air Swing refurbishment at Rainton Arena Spring Fair. So this is the first time the ride has been out travelling since it left the park um, Lightwater Valley in uh, North Sandway in Yorkshire, um, which was not actually owned by the park, it was just hired out by Alex, but prior to that it did spend some time at Coney Beach Portal and did briefly travel with Billy Stevens until Alex bought the ride in January 2016 and placed it at Lightwater Valley, but roll on to a few years later and here it is at Rainton Arena under the full refurbishments and the name Airswing and we have to say we are loving the work that is done on this ride, looking absolutely fantastic. In the last episode of this month in UK Forwards, we heard about some temporary flat rides opening up at Alton Towers in Staffordshire. Now that has been confirmed by the park and we are loving the marketing that's been done for this. Uh, it's all been done under the Retro Squad theme and the rides have been hired out uh, by the showman and, have been, and the matter has been dealt with by the Mellors group. And here we have the themes for the ride. So we have Funk and Fly, which is the re-theme for the Super Trooper hired out by David Irvin. We have Mixtape, which is the Sartori Roto Techno, or Splashing Jumper is better known as, which is called Jumper Jumper and is owned by Freddie Jr. and David Stokes. And finally, we have the Thunderdome Waltzer, which is owned by John Collins. And this is the very first place it is opened up anywhere ever. It was scheduled to open up at uh, Nottingham Goose Fair 2020, but that got cancelled because of coronavirus. So Alton Towers is the very first place this waltzer has ever appeared at. William Warwick Seastorm, which is a Fabrice Happy Sailor, is due to open up at Tur Prince Fun Park in Wales. Um, the ride was due to make its first outing at Lincoln Fun Fair, but that got cancelled last minute by the council, um, despite the... Uh, protests and despite the well not really much protest because there wasn't really yet much more, but despite the petitions and despite the emails asking them not to cancel the events uh and it, it did end up getting cancelled at the end i mean well, there's no really it's not really where, anywhere else i can go with that but yeah the ride has managed to finally open up for the first time under william's ownership at Tur prince in wales william robert wilson's key femme at miami which is called dominator has been spotted at dick beth funfair with a brand new dangly leg bench. Um, this should be made by uh, Eagle Fabrications, might be made by a different company, I could be wrong, but this is the very first time a key femi machine has been spotted with a dangly leg bench of this type. We're not talking about um, the one that is travelled by Manning's owned by Deep Pink, but because that, although that does have a dangly leg bench, that is a different set that was made by Keith himself or may have been a collaboration with Tivoli, but very similar seating to KMG or Tivoli, um, but yeah, this is the very first time that this type of Miami made by Keith Emmett has been seen with this particular type of dangly leg bench. 
the Supreme Waltzer, which was made by Fairtrade Services and is brand new to Joe William White, is opening up for the very first time at Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach as a guest attraction. It hasn't been confirmed exactly how long the ride will be staying at the park and where and when it will be open after it's done at the park, but uh, we look forward to seeing where this ride will be going next. For the very first time, Stanley Thurston's Extreme has opened up under the completely refurbished Jetfire. So the ride opened up at Letchworth Garden City and proven to be very, very popular, did really, really well there. So the ride has seen a brand new artwork, a brand new pay box, as well as a brand new top spot sign, looking absolutely brilliant. John Cogger has sold his freefall uh, Harry Stair Miami to Darren Matthews and the ride has been opened up at a uh, Norfolk showground at the Thunderworld event there. Um, should be opening up hopefully in Bristol later on in the year, so we're all hoping to be seeing this machine uh, for the very first time uh, when it does open there. <laughs> Another ride in the Cogger family has been sold. Now the ride is Joseph Cogger's Bounce and it has been sold to John Jennings Jr. So the ride is currently being minded by John at uh, Blackheath Common and will be leaving with John uh, when they take full possession of the ride after the fair has been finished. Now this ownership change took place uh, at the end of 2019 but we didn't find out about this until earlier this month. So Edward Scarrett's roller coaster Ghost Train um, is, has been sold to Harrison Rogers and was open for the first time since the first lockdown at a uh, Yate Football Club in South Gloucestershire and we did manage to get to see this machine in person so here's the video on the screen of when we did then. Joseph Guest has sold his Music Express Super Bob, which was built by Steve, Steve Severins in Belgium. Uh, but yeah, the, the ride has been sold to Jerome Benson, and the ride is making its first appearance under the new ownership at Putney Common in London, along with uh, Avengers and Top of the World, which we mentioned earlier in this episode. After nearly 40 years of him owning this, John Brixton has sold his meteorite sandboard roundup to Jonathan Mason. Now, as of recording the audio for this particular part of the video, the ride has actually arrived at Swindon Link Centre, where it will be making its first ever appearance under the new ownership. Now, we don't often get to report on stuff like this, as this doesn't really tend to happen a lot, but uh, here we go. Um, the Express to Hell Ghost Train, which was built and travelled by Stephen Holland, um, has been scrapped. Uh, yeah, the ride was scrapped uh, earlier on during April, however, the cars and the track of the ride have both been saved. Um, no word as to what will be happening with the cars on the track of the ride, um, but yeah, we don't get to see ride scrappages happen a lot, and the ride has been officially scrapped, uh, other than the cars on the track, of course, uh, since it was brand built brand new uh, to Stephen in April of 2000. Now, in the past month, there have been changes to two Caterpillar Apple roller coasters. So the first one pictured has been sold from M&D's theme park in Scotland to Walt Murphy and the one has been replaced by uh, one that has been bought from uh, Bernard McCormick so we don't have any photos of this one but the ride as far as we're aware has been built up at the park um, probably on the same spot as the former Caterpillar which has now gone to Walt Murphy but yeah that's all we have to touch up on and that's it for uh, ride changes so back to you in the studio-ish. And that's it for this month's episode of This Month in UK Fun Fairs. So, uh, now the Fun Fairs have been allowed to open, well, quite a lot of them have opened actually. Uh, hopefully, let's see how many we can get to in May, and let's see how well things go for the fairground industry moving forwards uh, onto the rest of the year. So, thank you so much for watching, and uh, goodbye for now.